This is 2OF Entertainment. Did you know that sex toys date back over 28,000 years? Yes, you read that correctly ancient humans were not only inventive with their tools and artifacts for survival, but also with objects of pleasure. Our ancestors crafted phallic shapes out of stone, bronze, camel dung, and even bread. While it might seem peculiar to envision early humans employing such objects in their intimate lives, there's a very high probability that they did. If the tools exist, the usage surely followed. Let's embark on a journey through the bizarre, the inventive, and the downright puzzling history of sex toys. Some of these ancient innovations might leave you scratching your head, while others may bring a wry smile to your face, but one thing's for sure. They got the job done. And at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters? In 2005, German archaeologists made a discovery that could only be described as, well, rock hard. Hidden away in a cave in Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany, they unearthed what is now recognized as the world's oldest dildo. This ancient stone phallus dates back roughly 28,000 years, making it one of the earliest known sex toys on Earth. Imagine the excitement of those archaeologists, piecing together 14 fragments of stone to reveal an object that clocks in at around 20 centimeters, 8 inches, long and 3 centimeters wide. While it's true that many ancient phallic objects may have had ceremonial or religious significance, it's a safe bet to assume that some were just for more personal, intimate purposes. After all, human nature has not changed much over the millennia, and the desire for sexual pleasure is as old as time. The Chinese were no strangers to the world of sex toys, and evidence suggests that they were quite the innovative bunch when it came to erotic implements. In the tombs of the Han Dynasty, dating back over 2,000 years, archaeologists uncovered a fascinating collection of sex toys made from materials like bronze and jade. These jade dildos were not only prized for their durability, but were also believed to possess mystical properties that could ward off evil spirits. Interestingly, these phallic objects were yest in both life and death. For the living, custom-made dildos were crafted to stimulate pleasure and explore sexual boundaries. For the deceased, however, these objects served a different purpose altogether. Jade phalluses were yest to plug orifices in the body, preserving the Kai the vital life force of the deceased in the afterlife. It's a curious blend of the spiritual and the sensual, showcasing the complex relationship between sexuality and spirituality in ancient Chinese culture. The ancient Greeks had a penchant for blending practicality with pleasure, and their sexual practices were no exception. Among their more unusual innovations was the Aulis Bacolix, a loaf of bread fashioned into a makeshift dildo. While the idea of using bread as a sex toy might sound like a joke, it was indeed a practice among the Greeks, who were known for their open attitudes towards sex. The images of bread sticks just as dildos have circulated throughout history, and while it remains unclear whether these bread phalluses were intended for religious rituals or simple carnal pleasure, one thing is certain. The Greeks were nothing if not resourceful. Fast forward to the 20th century, and the world of sex toys took on a new guise one of health and wellness. The Andis Vibrator, popular throughout the 1930s, was marketed as a beauty tool designed to promote circulation in the body, face, and scalp. Of course, it didn't take long for consumers to discover that this handy device could be est on other parts of the body as well, leading to a surge in popularity for vibrators. Similarly, the Hollywood Vibratone, a device from the 1940s, was touted as a spot reducer. Manufacturers claimed that applying vibrations to problem areas could help users lose weight. Yet, with a bit of imagination, users found more pleasurable ways to us this vibrating wonder. In fact, this model would later become the basis for the famous Hitachi Magic Wand, 
a device that remains one of the most popular and recognizable sex toys to this day. The 1970s heralded a sexual revolution that saw masturbation become a symbol of liberation and self-empowerment. During this era, people began to speak more openly and positively about self-pleasure, and sex toys started to shed their taboo status. A key figure in this movement was artist and sexual educator Betty Dodson, who began teaching women-only masturbation workshops in the late 1960s. Dodson argued that masturbation was a powerful tool for women to reclaim their autonomy and work toward liberation. She personally recommended the Hitachi magic wand to participants in her workshops, solidifying the device's status as a must-have sex toy. It was around this time that vibrators began to be marketed as sex aids rather than personal massagers, a move that signaled a broader acceptance of these devices in mainstream culture. 1983, the year of the rabbit. The year 1983 marked a revolution in the world of sex toys, a quiet yet powerful uprising that would forever change the landscape of sexual pleasure. Enter the rabbit vibrator, a device that, over the next few decades, would become one of the most iconic and beloved sex toys ever created. This dual-action pleasure device, with its distinctive bunny-eared clitoral flicker and rotating pearl head, not only captured the imaginations of millions, but also carved out a permanent place in popular culture. A Cute Ruse – The Birth of the Rabbit Vibrator The story of the rabbit vibrator begins in Japan, where it was first conceived as a clever solution to a rather tricky problem. Japanese obscenity laws were, and still are, notoriously strict, with heavy penalties for the distribution of sexually explicit material. To navigate these legal waters, Vibratex, one of the first companies to bring the rabbit to the United States, had to get creative. The solution, disguise a sex toy as a cute, non-threatening animal. Thus, the rabbit vibrator was born, its form inspired by the rabbit, a symbol of luck and prosperity in Japanese culture. The device was crafted in bright, candy-coated colors, making it appear more like a whimsical toy than a tool of sexual pleasure. The cute design was not just about aesthetics. It was a strategic move to ensure that these vibrators would sail through customs without raising any eyebrows. After all, who could object to a charming little bunny? Rabbit Fever, the pop culture phenomenon, the rabbit vibrator's journey from niche product to cultural icon was catapulted into high gear by an unexpected source, television. In a now legendary episode of Sex and the City, Charlotte York, the show's prim and proper character, is introduced to the rabbit vibrator and quickly becomes obsessed. The episode, which aired in 1998, did more for the rabbit's popularity than any marketing campaign ever could. Almost overnight, the rabbit became a household name, and women across the world were clamoring to get their hands on one. The timing was perfect. The late 1990s and early 2000s saw the rise of online shopping, which gave the rabbit vibrator unprecedented visibility. UK-based adult toy store Ann Summers capitalized on this trend, reporting that they sold a staggering 1 million rabbits in just 12 months after the launch of their online store. The rabbit had officially become a global phenomenon. Celebrity Fairy Dust – The Power of Endorsement If there's one thing that can catapult a product into superstardom, it's a celebrity endorsement, and the rabbit vibrator received plenty of those. Before the age of social media influencers, celebrities still held the power to sway public opinion with a single quote. Actress Eva Longoria famously declared, I give rabbit vibrators to all my girlfriends. They scream when they unwrap it. The best gift I can give them is an orgasm. With endorsements like this, it's no wonder that sales of the rabbit soared. But the rabbit's crowning achievement came in June 2006, when it received the ultimate seal of approval. Oprah Winfrey, in an issue of O Magazine, the rabbit habit, a particularly luxurious version of the rabbit vibrator was featured as the Rolls-Royce of sex toys. 
For a product that was already enjoying widespread popularity, this endorsement was pure gold. Oprah's nod sent sales skyrocketing, and the rabbit vibrator was solidified as a must-have item for women seeking both pleasure and empowerment. The last few decades have seen an explosion in the sex toy industry, with innovations that would likely boggle the minds of our ancient ancestors. One of the most cutting-edge developments is the clitoral sucker, such as the Satisfier from Easy Toys. This device uses micro-robotics to mimic the sensation of lips and tongue, simultaneously stroking and sucking to deliver unparalleled clitoral stimulation. It's a far cry from the stone falooses of old, but the goal remains the same, enhancing sexual pleasure. The evolution of sex toys from rudimentary stone tools to high-tech gadgets speaks to the enduring human desire for pleasure and exploration. Whether it's a simple jade phallus from ancient China, or a sophisticated robotic device from the 21st century, sex toys have played and continue to play a vital role in the pursuit of sexual satisfaction. And, as technology continues to advance, who knows what the future holds for the world of erotic implements. One thing is certain, the story of sex toys is far from over.